A reading is from Genesis chapter 22 and reading from verse 1. God commands Abraham to offer Isaac. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham, and Abraham answered, Yes, here I am. Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. There in a mountain that I will show you, offer him as a sacrifice to me. Early the next morning, Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice, loaded his donkey, and took Isaac and two servants with him. They started out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham saw the place in the distance. Then he said to the servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham made Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice, and he himself carried a knife and live coals for starting the fire. As they walked along together, Isaac said, Father? He answered, Yes, my son? Isaac asked, I see that you have the coals and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham answered, God himself will provide one. And the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place which God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he picked up the knife to kill him. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, Yes, here I am. Don't hurt the boy or do anything to him, he said. Now I know that you honour and obey God because you have not kept back your only son from him. Abraham looked round and saw a ram caught in a bush by its horns. He went and got it and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place, The Lord Provides. And even today people say, On the Lord's mountain, he provides. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hi there. There's a story about Snoopy the dog, the little cartoon dog. And Snoopy's in a desert. He's busy digging away for buried Egyptian treasure. Hat in his head, keep off the sun, shovel in his hand, and he's having a ball. It's very exciting digging for treasure, he said. In fact, if I discovered any valuable coins, it could be worth a fortune. All it takes is faith and patience. And then here's a sudden thought. But what if it occurs to you you're digging in the wrong desert? Digging for treasure in the wrong place. I find there's lots of treasure in the Bible, but the story of Abram and Isaac, I wouldn't have thought of as featuring amongst them. It's a very strange story, a very evocative story, a very colourful story, but does it really have anything to say to us in the 21st century? Is there any treasure in it for us? After all, it's a story about a father who's prepared to kill his own son because, and this is the strangest thing of all, because God had commanded him to do it. And he put his trust in God and was about to go ahead until, of course, the story has a good ending, except for the sheep that was caught in a fence and sacrificed instead. Isaac was spared. But we're told that Abram trusted God enough that he was willing to do that. It doesn't make any sense, does it? There's no treasure there for us, surely. Except, and I find that the Bible is always a bit of an except, except if we put the story into the context of all that we're told about Abraham. Because we're told that Abram was a wandering nomad. He spent his life wandering around a relatively small country. He was an Aramean. And then one day he believed that God appeared to him or spoke to him and said, Abram, I'm calling you to become the father of a great nation. In fact, your descendants will be more numerous than the number of grains of sand on the seashore or the number of stars in the sky. And Abram believed him, trusted that this was going to be what would happen. God's promises would come to pass. And when God asked him to leave his country and go to another country that he was going to give him where his descendants would become a nation living there, Abram went out, trusting in God, not knowing where he was going. An unknown country. But he went in faith and obedience and, I suppose, with patience that eventually God would fulfil his purposes. He went, in the words of Star Trek, boldly went where no man has gone before. And isn't that, in a sense, what he was doing in the story that we read this morning? The story of Abraham and Isaac and about to sacrifice his own son because God had told him to do it. And he did it trusting that somehow God's loving purposes would still come to pass, even though he was being asked to do this terrible thing. And of course, God at the last moment intervened and told him not to do it. But he was prepared to go into the unknown in faith and patience, even if it meant that he would be cutting off the one source of becoming the father of many nations, the death of his own only legitimate son. Well, in a funny kind of way, there's maybe some treasure there for us. He boldly went where no man has gone before, in faith and obedience in the loving purposes of God. We're living in very uncertain times, aren't we? The whole world is living in uncertain times. None of us know what the future really will be like. In a few months' time, in a year's time, even in several years' time, we're venturing into the unknown, but not with an awful lot of confidence. Oh yes, scientists all over the world are doing their best to find a vaccine as quickly as possible, but there's no absolute certainty that that vaccine, any vaccine will work. They're certainly trying to come up with medicines that might alleviate 
the effects of the virus and that certainly would help a lot and we're all doing our best hopefully to keep social distancing and keep the guidelines so that we can minimise the impact of COVID-19. But is there more that we can do than simply put our faith in human endeavour and patiently wait for something good to come of it? Well, that's, that's really good in itself. But as somebody said to me the other day, maybe we could do with a bit more comfort if it's possible. And that's where the story of Abraham, I think, begins to yield some treasure. Because it's a story about somebody who went out in faith and patience into the unknown, trusting in God's loving purposes. And perhaps we can do the same. We can do the same, perhaps, when we remember the words of Jesus, Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Other words of Jesus, I will be with you always, with you in my love, even to the end of time. Words in the book of Revelation that are thought of as speaking about Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If Anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will have a meal with him or her. Or the words, very powerful words of the Apostle Paul, there is nothing in all creation, neither death nor life, nor things to come, neither principalities nor powers, nothing in all creation <clears throat> that will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, the one who gave everything for us. Yeah, maybe there is something there to cling on to. There's something there to give us faith and patience into the unknown. Something that just takes us beyond faith and trust and patience in human endeavour and waiting for the loving purposes of God to be fulfilled in us and for us. Have a good day.